I'm going to analyse a driving test report sheet now from a driving test candidate who emailed me in his details recently. He did his driving test in Dundalk in County Loud and he got some great feedback from the tester about what went wrong during his driving test. So I'm going to share that feedback and more tips and advice with you so you can avoid making the same mistakes he did. So let's have a look at the driving test report sheet now. So as you can see, it's not the worst driving test report sheet in the world. He has seven grade two marks there, um, which are your medium marks, your, your serious but not very serious marks, let's say that's grade twos. Grade ones are minor, he just has three of those, so I wouldn't worry about them too much. But the big one here is the grade three mark, okay, on pedestrian crossing. So let's just have a summary here that you can see on screen. He did the driving test in Dundalk, which is a large town in County Loud. He did it at around 3 p.m. he said, so it was pretty busy and there probably were more challenges on the road at that time as opposed to doing the test at 10 or 11 in the morning. The driving tester said that he's not a million miles away and he's on the right track, but there was a couple of things that let him down. The big one was tunnel vision, focusing too much on what's straight ahead and he missed the pedestrian crossing um, at a pedestrian crossing. What he said was he followed a bus blindly and he didn't see the pedestrians to the right um, of the bus. And because he was so focused on following the bus, the pedestrian had the right of way and he got a grade three on that. So I'll go into that in more detail um, in a few moments and I have a photograph of that as well to show you. And there was one or two other instances as well with pedestrian crossings and he had a few technical issues with his phone as well, which I'm going to go into detail. So that's the summary anyway, and I'm going to go into the, to more specific detail now on the mistakes that occurred. So first of all, he definitely did not get off to the best start in the driving test because he had his phone switched to silence private numbers. Um, he did this because he said he often gets calls to his personal mobile um, that are work related. So he wanted to silence uh, any private numbers. But the problem is the tester is going to call you on a private number. So he got a bit concerned that he wasn't getting the call and he ended up going into the test center to let them know he was there. But the testers replied that we, the test will only begin once we give you the call. So I think he realized this, he changed his phone settings and he, and he got the call uh, or the tester just did the test. I, he didn't go into detail about what happened, but either way it got sorted out. So it's just a little tip for, for you folks out there that just be careful um, that you don't have your phone on silent or that you don't have private numbers on silent or to be diverted or anything like that because the tester is going to call you on a private number. Now in Wexford they'll actually come out to the car park and they'll knock on the window and say are you this a person are you that person or whatever because it's just handy in Wexford because there's a nice quiet little private car park but that's not going to be the case in in all test centers around the country um, in the vast majority of cases they're going to give you a call so just be ready have your phone ready and expect a call 5, 10, 15 minutes before your appointed time. So the first mark here you can see on the report sheet is a grade two mark under rules and checks. So this means it's in relation to the theory and the road signs. Now he knows which two theory uh, issues caught him out. The first thing was he got a question wrong and the question was the following. How would you check your brake lights if you were on your own? And he got confused and he froze a bit and he didn't really answer it correctly. The answer is you would go and bring your car up against some glass or a window of some type. Uh, so while the engine is on or the ignition is turned on, press the brakes and then look in your rear view mirror or look behind you and then you can see that your brake lights are working if you're on your own. So that's one question he fell down on. Another, que another question, not, not, not a question so much, excuse me, more a sign was this sign here, okay? This is a sign for a pedestrianized street. Now, this was the sign that he was more used to looking at from the rules of the road book with a little um, information plate underneath it. But the sign that the tester asked him was this one here, which is a much bigger sign without any extra information about times of operation or any of that kind of stuff. So he knew what the sign was. It's just that the larger size and the way it was displayed differently just threw him off a little bit. So just be aware of that. The, the testers will have their own signs that they'll show you and 
you know, it was just a little bit bigger than what he was used to, and he was thrown off a little bit by that. Um, he got a grade two, so there was another Thierry mark there as well, but I'm not sure where that one was. He wasn't uh, specific on that, so it could have been just another sign that he got wrong or another question that he got wrong. But that's the Thierry anyway, rules and checks, that's where the grade two mark happened there. Let's move on then to the technical checks. Now, it's only a grade one mark, so I wouldn't be too worried about it or anything like that. He's not 100% sure, but he thinks it's from keeping his foot on the brake as he was testing the indicator. So, at the start of the test, um, the tester is going to do some technical checks. So, he's going to come out, he or she is going to come out and check that your indicators and brake lights are working. So, he must have checked that the brake lights are working first, and then the tester said, Okay, let's have a look. At, let's put on your left indicator and your right indicator, please. And I think as he was doing that, he still had his foot on the brake, which makes it a little bit harder to see the indicators. But I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's a major issue. But he thinks that's where it happened. Um, it could have been somewhere else. If you if you get a mark on technical checks, it's usually something to do with the controls of your car at the start. Usually, when the tester asks you, "Can you show me how you would use your wipers?" or "Can you show me how the hazard lights work?" or can you show me where your dipped headlights are, that kind of thing. So anyway, it was only a grade one, so you know, it's not a big deal. Like The driving test canners also lost a mark on position turning right. Now this is from a major road um, like this, going into a smaller minor road. Now I'm not sure if there was a filter lane like, like this here, you see this, this kind of filter lane here. I'm not sure if, if it was that, or if it was more of a single line in the middle of the road like this, the candidate wasn't um, specific on that, but it was one of them anyway. And basically, because the windows were down fully, the driving test candidate found it hard to hear. And that's what he said was the main reason for him being too late coming into the right or moving over to the right. That's the thing to be aware of, folks, that the windows have to be down fully now if the examiner requests it. Um, this, that's what happened with this guy in Dundalk and I had a girl there in Wexford during the week who had to have the windows down fully as well. It's just for during these times for ventilation purposes, okay? So that's it. Just make sure you have your, your listening ears on and don't be afraid to ask the tester to speak up or to repeat themselves if you want because it's very important that you know exactly where you're going, whether it's right or left or whatever. Another grade two mark here on observation changing lanes. Now I've made lots of videos on this and I'm going to leave a link in the description on my video on changing lanes. It's pretty simple here, like he probably just didn't get enough mirror checks. It could be connected to the blind spot check as well. Now you need to be careful when it comes to checking the blind spot changing lanes. It probably shouldn't be called a blind spot per se. A sideway glance is probably more accurate and more relevant let's say. So if you're changing lanes, the most important thing is to keep double checking the mirrors, particularly the side ones in the direction you're going. So the right side mirror is more important if you're moving to the right lane and the left side mirror is more important if you're moving over to the left. So if you're changing lanes to the right, for example, check your mirrors, indicate right in good time so people know what your intentions are. Check the mirrors again, quick look forward and just a quick sideway glance and then keep checking the mirrors as you're going across. Move the wheel gradually, don't do any swerves or anything like that. So I'm assuming he didn't go into detail on the observation changing lanes problem here, the grade two mark, but it's more than likely to do with not enough mirror checks and maybe some issue with the blind spot that he didn't check the blind spot or maybe he overdid the blind spot and looked too much. So you don't want to give a big shoulder check when you're changing lanes like this because it's too long and you're taking your eyes off the road too, for too long a period of time. So. More than likely, it was something to do with not enough mirror checks and maybe a, an issue with the blind spot. But as I said, I'll have a detailed video on observation changing lanes and I will leave a link for that in the description. Next, we have a reaction to hazards. So you'll see here it's under reaction and also anticipate. So it's because the driving test candidate was not planning ahead properly was not reacting properly to hazards such as maybe a speed bump or pedestrians crossing the road or somebody opening a door unexpectedly or um, a dog running out like it, it's a wide variety of things it could be but we know that in this case it's going to be linked to the speed because this driving test candidate as you'll see here also lost two grade two marks there on speed and very often you're going to have 
grade two marks that are linked together. So although speed and reaction and anticipation of hazards are different faults, they're very much connected because if you're going too fast, you're probably not going to be giving yourself a chance to accurately analyze the road ahead and read the road ahead and ultimately react to hazards. So the tester did say to this candidate specifically that at certain points you were going too fast for the traffic conditions. So that means that there might have been um, a queue of traffic up ahead, for example, and because the candidate was going so fast for the conditions, it meant that he had to brake suddenly. And it was probably also not unrelated to the pedestrian crossing incident, because if you're going too fast, you're probably not going to be able to react to pedestrians that are crossing or that are about to cross the road. That's why it's so important to keep an eye on your signs. So for example, this sign here is a, is a warning sign that there's a school up ahead. So you could very well have students crossing the road some of them will cross responsibly and some not so much. And remember at the start of the video, I said that the driving test candidate did his driving test at around three o'clock. So the worst, the worst students out on the road and very often they're not going to be paying proper attention and they could cross the road in a reckless and unsafe way. He also said that from previous tests and he has failed the test a few times before, he got done for progress, which was going too slow and being too hesitant. So. The driving test candidate told me that because he was so focused on progress, it probably affected him in an adverse way here and he probably overcompensated and he ended up going too fast on a few occasions here, which is not ideal because you're kind of going from one extreme to the other then. As I always say, each road is different. You have to treat each road individually. Just because you got marked on progress in a previous test does not give you the license to drive in a faster way or a more decisive way the next time, because all roads are different. If you have a road that is uh, open and clear and wide and has none or very few parked cars, well then by all means, give it some juice and get her up to fourth gear. But if you have a road that has parked cars and maybe has a bit of a dodgy road surface, has some speed bumps, um, other obstructions like people walking on the side of the road or, or maybe it's a bit narrower or whatever. Well, on those type of roads, you do not want to reach the speed limit of say 50 kilometers, for example. You need to be going at about 30, 35. You need to be going at a speed that you're able to react and brake and slow down just in case someone crosses the road. Remember, each road is individual and you have to adjust your driving to suit the conditions on each road that you face. The learner driver here also lost a grade two mark on signals at roundabouts. Now this was in relation to going left on the roundabout, he says. So if we look, if you look from this exit here, okay, so he, let's say he's coming from here and his plan is to go left up along here. The driving test candidate told me in the email that he got a little bit flustered and he certainly indicated too late. The signal left to go left at the roundabout was certainly too late. And now the reason that it was too late, it, it didn't happen very often. You'll see there's only one mark on signals. It's not that it happened very often, but whatever happened at a certain particular roundabout, the driving test candidate just wasn't sure. Maybe he got a little bit confused with the road markings. Maybe he was focused too much on something ahead. Maybe, maybe there was pedestrians here. He was too focused on them. And for whatever reason, he just left it too late to indicate and he indicated when he was about two or three car lengths from the line. So he indicated around here, which is too late. He should have indicated way back here just after the tester said to him, let's take the next left at the roundabout. Now we can see a grade one mark here on vehicle controls, secondary controls. Now normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too worried about grade ones, but I think we, we have to focus on this a little bit today because what happened here was his phone rang and the phone rang during the test via his Bluetooth. So this was very distracting and a little bit stressful, um, needless to say. Now the driving test candidate, unfortunately, didn't know how to turn it off. And he was worried that he might accidentally answer the phone. And I mean, that wouldn't be good because you're not allowed to have any sound or video recording equipment on anyway. And anyway, you're not, you're not meant to answer the phone in a test, it's just common sense. So he kind of panicked and he let it ring out. And the reason he got a great one mark here was because he didn't know how to effectively turn off the Bluetooth when it rang. This is an, unfor an unfortunate mistake, but it does happen. 
and again it, it's just a goes to show that if you have bluetooth connected to your phone just make sure that you have it turned off for the driving test because you don't want any little incidents like this happening on your test because let's face it you've enough to be worrying about without the bluetooth playing tricks on you in your driving test okay so let's move on to the grade 3 mark here he got a grade 3 mark here on his driving test under pedestrian crossing so he was following a bus and what happened was the driving test candidate followed the bus blindly because the bus went through um reasonably quickly he's not He's not saying the bus was speeding or anything like that, but the bus was making good progress through the pedestrian crossing here. So because the bus went through, unfortunately, the learner driver just followed the bus through. And unfortunately, by that stage, the pedestrian on the right might have been here, uh, for example, when the bus was going through. But by the time the bus had gone through and by the time the learner was a couple of meters before the pedestrian crossing, the pedestrian that was about to cross was very very close or was looking to cross and that's where the tester gave them a grade 3 mark because the learner driver didn't anticipate a pedestrian crossing there i don't know if a pedestrian had already put his foot on the crossing or not i'm not sure he didn't go into that much detail he probably can't remember because it's all a little bit of a bit of a bit of a haze at the moment but that's where the mistake happened anyway and it just goes to show just because you see a vehicle in front of you proceeding to go through a pedestrian crossing or to overtake a parked car or something like that does not mean that you should follow them straight away because remember this was a bus and buses are big specimens and you're not going to be able to see as far ahead or as far to the left right or straight ahead with a bus because the sheer size of them is going to blind you um, so you, you won't be able to see as much you see so that's why it's always good to keep a little bit further back from buses and trucks because you're going to see more that way if you do so he basically followed the bus blindly didn't have time to see the pedestrian crossing the road and uh, remember this is a pedestrian crossing here and unfortunately that's where the grade 3 mark occurred again as i said it was probably not unrelated to his fear of being marked for going too slow and he says that throughout this test the, the marks that he lost on progress on the previous two tests were playing on his mind. So he feels that he just went from one extreme to the other there. And unfortunately, he paid the price on a pedestrian crossing here. As you're approaching the pedestrian crossing, you have to be scanning it left and right to watch out for any pedestrians that might be there or about to enter onto pedestrian, to the pedestrian crossing. Because the pedestrians are not always going to be the most alert and they're not always going to be tuned in. Look at this photo here. This is a photo of the point of view that a pedestrian would have if they were crossing the pedestrian crossing or if they were about to cross. They are generally looking straight across the road. Their aim is to get from one side of the road to the other. It's your job, the driver's job, to watch out for any pedestrians on the approach because if it's a crossing like this with the flashing amber beacons, pedestrians have more rights to cross here as opposed to it being at a pelican crossing like this where they would have to press the button and wait for the light to go red for traffic and green for the pedestrians. If you have supported me by PayPal, or you're about to, I wanna say a big thank you. This kind of financial support is what keeps the channel going and keeps it up to date for you and the other learner drivers following you. So I'm very grateful for that. If you would like to email me your driving test report sheet, you can do that to the following email address, danetai at gmail.com. And you can email me too if you have any questions about driving or anything you're not sure of on the road. So I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. All the best.